Grandpa stole his first buggy in 1892. Uh, I met your grandma pig slopping in 46. Oh, every Christmas we'd visit my Uncle Fred in prison. And you have found us, America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth, on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. Great to have you along for another great show today. And uh, I got to tell you, I had my interview with Dr. Henry Louis Gates for this week. And in recent times, we've been uh, giving him a four-minute segment at the back of the show because that's enough time to talk about What's going to be happening on Finding Your Roots on PBS? And so we got into this conversation and talking about man's cruelty to man and how we learn about some of these things through our family history research. And it was so fascinating, it went on for like 16 minutes. Well, even with that, I've had to edit it down. So that's going to be one of our featured visits coming up, an 11-minute segment with Dr. Henry Louis Gates coming up in about 10 minutes from right now. Plus, after that, we're going to have Jen Allen on and Tyler Staley from FamilySearch.org. They're going to be talking about what to expect this year at Roots Tech, how you can get in, who the speakers are, some of the classes you can sign up for. Now's the time to be focused on that because a lot of these classes fill up pretty quickly so make sure you catch that as well hey if you haven't signed up for our weekly genie newsletter yet you got to do it it's available very easily and free through extremegenes.com and on our facebook page we give you a blog each week links to current and past shows and links to stories that you as a genealogist will be interested in right now let's head off to boston and talk to my good friend david allen lambert the chief genealogist of the new england historic genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. Hello, David. Hey, Fish. How you been doing? I am doing great. In fact, i got to tell you this. In January, we passed 60,000 podcast downloads for the first time. And Bravo. A, a That's great, great number. Yeah, actually over 63,000. We've never done that before. And so i got to send out thanks to everybody for uh, talking up the show and sharing news about it with so many other people because it just continues to grow here in our seventh year. So uh, thanks so well, much for that. Well, it's just amazing to think that so many people want to hear us just banter on every week. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. We love our listeners. Yes, we do. And well, there's a lot to talk about today, too. There are observations and commemorations and anniversaries. Well, let's start with the more recent anniversaries and work backwards. The 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz concentration camp, of course, has just recently happened. Peeling back a little further, on January 17, 1920, the Volstead Act occurred, and that is the beginning of prohibition. Oh, wow. Which, uh, yeah, that that had an my effect for a long time, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, my grandfather was a bootlegger, and that was a that was a tight one for him, I'm sure. Going back a little further than that, in 1845, a little organization now known as American Ancestors and the New England Historic Genealogical Society started. We're a small genealogy library, and we've grown. Congratulations, yes, so 175 one. years. Yes, it's our big anniversary year. And, of course, a bigger year to know about is the commemoration of the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the Mayflower. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to our first family history news. This isn't about the pilgrims this time. This is actually about the Wampanoag people. And this isn't a story in regards to their ancestors and losing something. There's a great story that was covered on Extreme Genes on the website and news. And this covers the search for the wampum belt that belonged to Metacomet. Now, many of you in history circles might know the story better if I say King Philip, the King Philip's War, uh, Massasoit's son, Metacomet, or known to the English as Philip, was captured, executed, and his wampum belt that he had was supposedly brought to England. And now they're searching for it. And actually, at NEHS, we have a video display screen with the whole story, and uh, it's quite exciting. Uh, hopefully, that will be found. One of our most amazing things to see in Washington, of course, are the monuments, but I like to pay respects at Arlington National Cemetery. Would you believe, Fish, it's actually running out of space? Yeah, I'm not surprised. It, 
They're saying in like two or three decades, without any change, it's going to actually be filled. That is why the county that Arlington is situated in, and Virginia has approved for them to add an additional 70 acres on the southern border, which will allow for 60,000 new burials. And this would extend the cemetery's life into the 2050s. Wow, that's great. I hope they find more so they can just keep it going forever more, you know? Very true. In other news, we go to Memphis, Tennessee, where an awkward situation has occurred. The Memorial Park Funeral Home and Cemetery were fined $1,500 as a civil penalty by the Tennessee Department of Commerce. Yeah, apparently they were reusing caskets that had been previously used for other people. Wow. Yeah, not that I would mind if I'm dead, because I guess I really wouldn't care, but this the whole idea of yeah you know they're not rental properties no 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 this is supposed to be a permanent condo and Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody Mm -hmm. else moves in that's not good are they going to dump the next person too and use it again a few years down the line Unfortunately, the story of cemeteries reusing plots has been historically happening for decades, if not centuries. I mean, look at Europe, the way they reuse cemeteries. Yep. I mean, you were over in Germany and you saw what that was going on. That's then. a rental situation. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but generally not an American. That leads to a story in Clearwater, Florida, where another African-American <laughs> cemetery, there was a cemetery that existed at least until the 1950s called the St. Matthew's Baptist Church Cemetery. This African-American cemetery now is probably under a building in a parking lot, like an office building. So uh, this is just terrible. I mean, they were hoping that this adjacent lot, archaeologists were using the same type of radar that they've been using to find them at the high school. Remember that right, one? Of- yeah. Not long ago, yeah, and the then golf under the course. golf course, right? Yeah, so this one might be a little bit harder because the site could have been destroyed. But you know, who turns a blind eye to something like that? I don't know. You know, it's, I don't just, know. it's terrible. Digging a little deeper into our past, uh, if you have Scottish ancestry from the Orkneys or the Shetland Islands, they are seeking you to do a genetic gene study test. And this is another story that you'll be able to find on Extreme Genes. All right, David, thank you so much. Great stuff. And uh, we're going to talk to you again at the back end of the show with another round of Ask Us Anything. Perfect. All right. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Dr. Henry Louis Gates about the latest episode on PBS's Finding Your Roots and some of his thoughts about genealogy and how it can change the world. That's all coming up in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Hey, Genies, as you make your plans to attend Roots Tech in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming up at the end of February, make sure you stop by the booth for Memory Web and meet my friends Chris and Nancy Desmond. They are genealogists. They are the creators of Memory Web, which is a fabulous app for saving your photos and putting metadata on them. In other words, you can mark them in a way that can be seen or not seen, where you can attach the back of a picture to the front of the picture, so whatever is written on there is associated with the front of the picture. And through that, you can actually share this material with other relatives and maybe find out the names of some people who are unidentified in these pictures. It's the photo app created by family historians for family historians, and they'll give you a great demonstration of exactly how well it works. In fact, you can find out a lot more even before we get to Roots Tech. Just go to their website, memoryweb.me slash extreme genes. That's memoryweb.me slash extreme genes. You will not be disappointed. Have you hit a brick wall in your family tree? Are you unsure how to use your DNA test results to resolve a research question? Do you want to travel where your ancestors walked and need to find details before you go? Need help joining a lineage society? Whatever your genealogy research question, the answer is Legacy Tree Genealogists. Legacy Tree Genealogists has been helping clients all over the globe discover their story since 2004. Legacy Tree has carefully selected and trained professionals who specialize in hundreds of countries and languages, as well as probate research and DNA analysis. And when you need experts on the ground in the countries where your ancestors came from, Legacy Tree Genealogist calls upon its global network of on-site researchers who know the local language and how to get their hands on the records you need. Legacy Tree Genealogist is the world's highest client-rated genealogy research firm and is recommended by genealogy industry leaders worldwide, including MyHeritage, 23andMe, and more. Request your free quote today at LegacyTree.com. That's LegacyTree.com. 
Thanks to technology, discovering your family's story is easier than ever. You can discover yours at Roots Tech, the world's largest family history conference. Register today for Roots Tech 2020. Don't miss this incredible four-day event, February 26th through 29th. Learn from over 300 classes on topics such as DNA, capturing family stories, and preserving legacies. You'll also enjoy daily celebrity keynote speakers. Use Pro promo code HOLIDAY and get your four-day pass for only $169. That's $130 off a regularly priced pass. Discover your family. Discover yourself. Discover your roots at Roots Tech, the world's biggest family history, genealogy, and DNA event, February 26th through 29th at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. Register today at rootstech.org. That's rootstech.org. All right, back at it on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show with my good friend, Dr. Henry Louis Gates from the PBS show Finding Your Roots. And uh, Dr. Gates, season six happening right now. What's the latest episode? Well, it's called Secrets and Lies, and it features the actors Justina Machado, Amy Ryan, and Sigourney Weaver. Oh, wow. And it's called Secrets and Lies because of deep, dark family stories that we unveiled. Let's start with Amy Ryan. <laughs> Amy's birth name, Scott, is Amy Jibinkowski. Oh. But she chose her mother's surname, Ryan, as her stage name. Now, we unearthed a number of buried secrets along her mother's line, her maternal okay. line. First, we discovered that Amy's great-grandparents, named Jenny Press and Walter Ryan, immigrated to America in 1907 from England as a married couple, even though Jenny was actually already married at the time to her first cousin, a, wow. man, named <laughs> <laughs> a man named Alfred Press, whom she left behind in England. And Jenny and Alfred had a son named Reginald, whom Jenny also abandoned when she ran off to America. And while pretending to be married in the United States, Jenny and Walter had five children together, including Amy's grandfather, Maurice. It was only after her real husband, Alfred Press, died in 1931 that Jenny and Walter were able to return to England and officially marry in their middle age. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's an amazing story. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And then we wanted to find out what happened to Reginald, the child Jenny had abandoned in England. He seems to have thrived. He married. He had a family of his own, and he lived a long life. And his offspring are Amy's heretofore unknown English cousins. And you know what she said? She looked at me in shock and said, there's a whole other world outside <laughs> our wildest dreams. <laughs> and it's I true. Said, yeah. No kidding. Sigourney Weaver found out on her father's side that her third great grandfather was a man named Sheffield Weaver. Scott, he was 11 years old when the American Revolution broke out in April of 1775, of course, with the Battle of Concord in Lexington, you, you remember from mm -hmm. elementary school. Yep. His older brother, Nathan, enlisted in the Patriot Army, which my fourth great grandfather, a free black man, also enlisted in. But soon, older brother Nathan became too ill to serve. And according to Sigourney's ancestors' pension records, Sheffield, the brother, at the tender age of 12 years old, was called on to substitute for his sick older brother, ended up stationed in Newport, Rhode Island, when the British attempted to invade the city. And Sheffield and his fellow soldiers repelled the invasion, and the victory at Newport helped pave the way for Rhode Island to become the first colony to sever its allegiance with England on May wow. 4th, 1776. Twelve years old, man. Wow. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard of uh, anybody that young. Usually, if, if they're that young, they're like a fifer or a drummer boy. Yeah. We don't know what exactly he did, but they were probably so desperate they were shoving guns at anybody's uh, <laughs> yeah. hands that they could. Right. But I wanted to focus on the DNA results. Um, you know, you're extreme genes. You love DNA. Yeah. And our three guests have very interesting DNA. And one of the goals of the series is to explode white supremacist notions of purity. Well, Justina Machado is 57% European, 25% African, and 12.3% Native American. And she was of Puerto Rican descent. And that people in the Dominican Republic, in Cuba, 
and in Puerto Rico tend to have that kind of, we call it the rainbow coalition of the genome, you know, right. European, African, and, and Native American. <laughs> and her DNA cousin is Gabby Hoffman. Oh, wow. Um, but even if you're 100% European going back 500 years, like Amy Ryan is or Sigourney, check out this diversity. For Amy Ryan, 50% British and Irish, 14.6% Eastern European. 9.2% French and German, 2.6% Spanish and Portuguese, 2% Ashkenazi Jewish, 1.5% Scandinavian, oh, wow. and 0.5% Greek and Balkan, and 16% <laughs> broadly North European. And her DNA cousin is, according to the paper yesterday, the candidate leading in the Democratic primary, the Iowa caucuses, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, <laughs> really? <laughs> Bernie Sanders, through obviously through her Jewish side of sure. her family. Yeah. Tree. And then finally, Sigourney Weaver is 84% from Great Britain, but also 8% from Germany, 4% from Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, 2% from Norway, and 2% from Sweden. So what this shows is that even in a gene pool that was contained in the European continent, there was a lot of mixing going on. Oh, Everybody, yeah. when the lights came down, through one way or another, sometimes by choice, often by force, people were breeding with each other. Yeah, and it, sure. it, it just, these DNA tests explode the notions of essentialized natural or biological fixed races. Yeah, and, purity and, and all that. Well, you know, when you consider, first of all, how much conquest there has been throughout history, right? And people going over yeah. lines. And then what would happen is the conquerors mix with the conquered. And uh, yep. and borders change, and then you got natural disasters that force people out, economic circumstances, and they all mix you know, and mix and mix again, and it's just the way it is. It is, and, you know, rape was just attendant upon war, and it remains that way. It's, it's horrific, it's horrendous, it's disgusting, but it's um, it's true. I mean, all, one more reason that war no more, that we should all work to abolish more. War, as trite as that sounds, we need to hear it more than ever. I would like to see a course, Scott, on comparative genocide. And I think that our students need to study slavery, yes, but they should study slavery with the Holocaust yep. and with the Armenian genocide, with the genocide in Rwanda, and understand that genocide is a structure a socio-political economic structure that manifests itself all over the world and all throughout the historical timeline. I had to tell Tony Shalhoub two Sundays ago that his, he'll be in season seven, that his great-great-grandfather was murdered in the Ottoman Empire because he was of Armenian descent and he was a Christian. He was murdered in the warm-up to the Armenian genocide. The famous Armenian genocide saw 1.5 million Armenians killed by the Turks uh, between 1915 and 1917. But this was 20 years before, in 1895, when 150,000 Armenians were murdered. And I think that that kind of teaching, yeah. not to be morbid, but teaching students that this specter like Serbia, and Bosnia, uh, and Russia, 10 million people killed all over the world and uh, all throughout the historical timeline. People have done evil things to each yes, other, Yes, just like the enslaved Africans and just like the Jewish people in Europe. And I think it would help to build links across ethnic lines, across national lines, if we know that we are all in the same boat, we've all suffered, and all of our ancestors have been scapegoated. It's one reason why I like yes. doing Eastern European ancestry, because you understand the history of anti-Semitism when you look at the pogroms you know, in the 1880s and 1890s and uh, continuously. That's why I think Finding Your Roots is so effective in teaching world history and American history, because you're so fascinated with these uh, celebrities and understanding details about them. And what we do is package the detail of our ancestry in the context of historical events. So we're teaching as we're um, yes. explicating ancestry. Uh, absolutely true. I think that's what we like to do here. We think of it that way as, as people dig up their roots and they learn about their ancestors. They're really learning about themselves and learning about absolutely. the possibilities and, and learning about different groups and how we interact. And it, it's just fascinating. And it's, and it's enlightening it and is. it's a joyous exercise. 
It is, and you think that, um, take the, the Jewish community, they've suffered so much in Eastern Europe, you think that the paper trail had disappeared? With Amy Ryan, we were able to go back to her sixth great-grandfather, Bartłomiej Mie, Jivankowski. He was born in 1690 in Poland, and on her mother's side, we were also able to go back to her sixth great-grandfather, named Timothy Adshead, and he was born in 1742 in Shropshire, England. So there you have a Jewish ancestry from Eastern Europe and non-Jewish ancestry mm-hmm. from England, and we were able to go back almost contemporaneously. It shows you that their records have remained, despite the horrors of war and genocide, and often during wars or the systematic repression of people, the oppressors destroy the records. Um, yes, that happened in France with the Huguenots. Yes, absolutely. But we're finding more and more and digitizing more and more. Every day it becomes easier to trace your family tree. It and, really and does. Not easy, but easier. And that, you know, easier. that's important. And so let me ask you this. Of all the episodes you've done in all the seasons, what was the reaction from the one celebrity you will never forget? Um, well, Joe Madison, who is a serious XM radio host, his nickname is the Black Eagle, we discovered through DNA that his father, quote-unquote, was not his father. Mm. That his biological father was different than the man he had called father till that man died. And we have an ethics protocol of PBS. I can't reveal that in front of two million people without some warning, so I called him on a Saturday. I said, Joe, I've never had to do this, but we know definitively that your biological father was a man who's different than you think. And I said, if you don't want to be in the series, this is confidential information. We won't reveal it publicly, but you'll have to drop out of the series. I mean, if you stay in the series, we have to talk about it, and that's all I can tell you about this person. And without missing a beat, he goes, really? And I said, yes. And he paused, and then he said, I want to be in the series, and I want to know the truth. He's Dr. Henry Louis Gates. He is the host and the creator of the PBS series Finding Your Roots. It's on Tuesday nights. Check your local listings for the time. Talk to you next week. Okay, my brother, take care. And on the way next, what's happening at Roots Tech for 2020? You'll find out in five minutes on Extreme Genes. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmasters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the grandma gap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks.
And welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. Very excited. Roots Tech is just around the corner coming up in Salt Lake City, Utah, the Salt Palace Convention Center. The last Wednesday in February, running into Saturday of that week, we got Tyler Staley and Jen Allen, who are deeply involved in this whole project right now with me on the line. And how are you guys doing? We're really good. Thank you. It's nice to be here again. Are, are your fans? family seeing you at all <laughs> at this time? Very little, but luckily they get it by now. It's the <laughs> every, every winter. Well, for those people who are unfamiliar with Roots Tech, it is the largest family history conference in the world, and it has uh, speakers every day and booths and classes, and people come from all over the place. This started what now? Is, it, is this our 11th year? This is actually our 10th year. Uh, in fact, we're celebrating 10 years of Roots Tech this year here in just a few weeks as we kick off an awesome year and celebrate the last decade that we have all experienced and really turn our sights to the next decade and beyond and how we can continue to grow and thrive together. Well, you think about that first year, Jen, how many people attended? You know, in 2011, there was around 2,000 people who were there. It was a very smaller group, very genealogists and technologists together in one room. So definitely expanded it since then just a little. What was it last year? Last year, you know, we welcomed around 27,000 people on site (laughs) over the four days. Wow. You know, it grew just a little. Yeah, just a little. 2,000 to 27,000. Yeah, I mean, it's just been fun to see it grow. You, you know, 10 years ago, genealogy kind of was restricted, right, to just your, your passionate, hardcore people. But with the Internet and technology advances over the last decade, it's really made it something that we can all do from our phones, from wherever we are. And so I think you can attribute a lot of the growth to that and some technology. And you think about the fact that you named it Roots Tech back then which seemed kind of, at the time, real forward thinking. It's like, well, how much technology is really going to get involved in this? And, I mean, DNA had really hardly even gotten started. Yeah, absolutely. DNA DNA was a huge push. Now you're looking at things like handwriting uh, recognition and AI and all these different innovations that are on the forefront here that are just going to keep driving the industry forward over the next 10 years, really. Yeah, absolutely. And and the guests that you've had over the years, you've had First Lady Laura Bush, you've had Steve Young, you've had Donny Osmond, and uh, some amazing, memorable speeches, including Dr. Henry Louis Gates a couple of years ago. This year, you guys have lined up a football Hall of Famer. <laughs> That's right. Tyler should be the one to speak to this because he's more excited than most. I, yeah, Jen, Jen can talk. I'm so excited. Emmett Smith from the Dallas Cowboys. If you grew up in the 90s watching the Cowboys, you saw Emmett Smith run up and down the, the NFL field. Three-time Super Bowl champion. Still leads the NFL in all-time rushing yards. So we are extremely excited to have him. He's coming to Rootstick on Saturday. Uh, February 29th and speaking at 11 a.m. Yeah, so if you're going to get your seat there, you want to make sure you get in the auditorium early. That's right. That's right. I had someone ask me just this weekend, well, what is he going to talk about? Because, you know, we don't really care about football so much. (laughs) You know, Emma has this really great background. He's a family man to the soul. And he also has had his own personal experience on Who Do You Think You Are episode from a few years ago where he even traveled back to Africa to discover his roots and had a very humbling and cool experience for him and his wife at the time. Isn't that amazing what these TV shows are doing with celebrities getting into this now? That's right. It's so cool. Now, you've also got another guest with a football tie. Yes. Yes, we do. That was not really on purpose. It was more by chance. But on Thursday, we have Leanne Tui, who will be joining us. And for those of you who have seen The Blind Side, it may have been a few years ago that you've seen it, but brush off those cobwebs. Leanne Tui is the real-life mom that Sandra Bullock portrays in the movie. And we actually just spoke with her personally a few uh, weeks ago, and she is charming and delightful in every way. And I think we'll just bring a knockout message. You know, when we talk about family, really she can speak to those who don't have that traditional family that we think about when we first talk about genealogy and family history. But anyone deserves to have a story and to be remembered, and she brings that message very, very clear. And, yeah, a little bit of football fun as well. Yeah, we're, that seems to be the, the ongoing theme, but not everybody is into football. Who else are your guests this year, Jen? Yeah, so on Friday we have David Kennerly, who is a Pulitzer Prize-winning photographer. 
and he is incredible. You may not recognize his name, but I promise if you Google his name, you will see endless selections of his photography that he's taken through the years. He's very much known for capturing the moment in the moment as it really is, and you see that very, very clear in his photography. And So he'll be talking about, you know, the story of you, but through a lens and how photography is such an important element to the work that we do as genealogists that he'll help us really capture that motivating message as he talks from experience. And he was the guy, as I recall, who took the picture of President Nixon with Elvis when Elvis came to visit the White House. <laughs> That's a, it's very possible. I actually don't know that one for sure. I would confirm your idea there. <laughs> well, there are a lot of pictures he's taken, that's for sure, and that is a big part of what we do. So let's talk about some of the classes this year. I was thinking about this in, in, in the first Roots Tech. It was uh, very different in terms of, uh, you know, what kind of classes we had. This year, of course, it just gets more and more into DNA and to other things that are really kind of unique to our time. I, I'm glad you brought it up. I think of all of the Roots Tech, you know, this might be some of our most diverse classes section uh, scheduled to choose from, really. There's something for everyone. You know, we have over 300 classes over the course of four days. If you're really interested in DNA, there's some deep dives that you can go in there, you know, from what are the different kind of tests available to triangulation, to how to reach out to new cousins and connections, all sorts of DNA classes, but also classes focused on technology and how we use technology today to preserve our own stories through social media and things like that. And then, of course, classes on any type of record and research methodology that you can imagine, from German records to Scottish records. There's a class for wherever your ancestors come from that can help you discover them a little bit better. And there's even going to be a panel on podcasts, I understand. That is correct. <laughs> I think you're on it. Yes, I am. I better check my schedule, make sure that's in there correctly. Yeah, we're going to be there with the genealogy guys and Lisa Louise yep. Cook with Genealogy Gems and uh, Amy Johnson Crow, who's got a brand new podcast going and talk about how people can start their own. That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really looking forward to that. All right. How do people get in, you guys? It is not too late. You just go to rootstech.org and you can register. It's still a great time to register right now. We're still in our promotional pricing period. The best time to get a four-day pass, or you can purchase a one-day pass. But yeah, rootstech.org, you'll see a bright red register button at the top, and you click on that, and you can register. We really know that not everyone can travel to Salt Lake. It takes time and effort, but we are offering what we're calling a virtual pass to Roots Tech 2020. So it's a great way to get some content and learnings from the conference without the travel fees. You can learn about it at rootstech.org. Our virtual pass will give you 30 recorded classes from the conference, it's 30 great sessions from some of the best presenters, uh, and you'll get that about 15 days after the conference ends. You can log in and watch these videos at your own time, your own convenience, and whenever you want. All right, and the dates once again? February 26th through the 29th in Salt Lake City. We end on Leap Day, so it's, you know, monumental for the next four years. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that's true. Usually we kind of end now in uh, early March, but it's a little different this year. Yeah, we're a little bit earlier. Our dates will actually kind of jump a little bit in the next two years, and then we get pretty consistent after that. So. All right. And when are you guys scheduled to go on vacation? <laughs> Directly after. <laughs> after we sleep, then we go. We'll see how many of you actually do get to do it right after. Well, Jen Allen and uh, Tyler Staley, both from FamilySearch.org, thanks so much for your time, and we're really looking forward to Roots Tech this year. We'll see ya. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, we've got another round of Ask Us Anything coming up when we return in three minutes on Extreme Genes America's Family History Show. Have you hit a brick wall in your family tree? Are you unsure how to use your DNA test results to resolve a research question? Do you want to travel where your ancestors walked and need to find details before you go? Need help joining a lineage society? Whatever your genealogy research question, the answer is Legacy Tree Genealogists. Legacy Tree Genealogists has been helping clients all over the globe discover their story since 2004. Legacy Tree has carefully selected and trained professionals who specialize in hundreds of countries and languages, as well as pro 
probate research and DNA analysis. And when you need experts on the ground in the countries where your ancestors came from, Legacy Tree Genealogist calls upon its global network of on-site researchers who know the local language and how to get their hands on the records you need. Legacy Tree Genealogist is the world's highest client-rated genealogy research firm and is recommended by genealogy industry leaders worldwide, including MyHeritage, 23andMe, and more. Request your free quote today at LegacyTree.com. That's LegacyTree.com. Hey, genies, as you make your plans to attend Roots Tech in Salt Lake City, Utah, coming up at the end of February, make sure you stop by the booth for Memory Web and meet my friends Chris and Nancy Desmond. They are genealogists. They are the creators of Memory Web, which is a fabulous app for saving your photos and putting metadata on them. In other words, you can mark them in a way that can be seen or not seen, where you can attach the back of a picture to the front of the picture, so whatever is written on there is associated with the front of the picture. And through that, you can actually share this material with other relatives and maybe find out the names of some people who are unidentified in these pictures. It's the photo app created by family historians for family historians, and they'll give you a great demonstration of exactly how well it works. In fact, you can find out a lot more even before we get to Roots Tech. Just go to their website, memoryweb.me slash extreme genes. That's memory web.me slash extreme genes you will not be disappointed thanks to technology discovering your family's story is easier than ever you can discover yours at roots tech the world's largest family history conference register today for roots tech 2020 don't miss this incredible four-day event february 26th through 29th learn from over 300 classes on topics such as dna capturing family stories and preserving legacies You'll also enjoy daily celebrity keynote speakers. Use promo code HOLIDAY and get your four-day pass for only $169. That's $130 off a regularly priced pass. Discover your family. Discover yourself. Discover your roots at Roots Tech, the world's biggest family history, genealogy, and DNA event. February 26th through 29th at the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City. Register today at Roots rootstech.org that's rootstech.org All right, this is the time in the show where we let you ask us anything on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. It's Fisher here with David Allen Lambert, back from the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. And we do have a question here, David, from Lorene Crandall Curtis. She says, I connect to Crandall cousins through DNA. We are first through sixth cousins since we share the same couple, David Freeman Crandall and Carolyn Marie Simmons, as distant grandparents to one degree or another. Although we all believe this couple is buried in Howell, Michigan, we differ in identifying parents for David. Find a Grave cites his parents as being buried in Ontario County, New York, but one group of cousins insists this is not correct. How can we straighten out our differences in opinion? Lorene Curtis. Well, yeah. I, mean, I would say the first thing to rule out the winner is... Does one of those two find a grave sites have a gravestone? Right. <laughs> yeah. That would be the easy I mean, one, but I can't imagine that that would be there because that would be too easy. Well, right. Well, I mean, then there's always that angle that somebody could have put a gravestone there 50, 100 years later, assuming someone's buried there. Right. Uh, or people are moved, uh, as we have seen, you know, and it could move across state lines. So they could they have been buried there originally based on a burial record. So burial records are good. And maybe there was a removal, and so they were technically buried in two different places. Sure. Um, so that's one thing to look at. I mean, of course, you know, there's obituaries, there's death notices, there's the notice after the funeral, the cards of thanks and things like that that you can find that might lead a clue to where they are. I mean, looking for tax records, where was the last place that he paid taxes? Where deeds recorded stating that it was the estate of a person? Or is he still selling land in the property by his widow after he died in the same county. So that does that put you in the correct state? That's one thing to think about. Wow. 
there's a lot of ground to cover there. But you're right, you know, and the thing is, when you have a big group like that, and she's talking first to sixth cousins talking mm-hmm. about this whole thing, you would think that some folks would have dug into some of that material. And that's really where I think the group kind of has to get together and lay their cards on the table, right? Well, what do you have? What's your proof of this? What's your proof of that? And when you start to collaborate, it's not a matter of who's right and who's wrong. It's a matter of finding out what the truth is. And you can only do that by putting together the collection of clues that are available within the family or things that people have discovered along the way. And maybe even putting your brains together to figure out, all right, what sources do we not have yet? Many of which you just talked about, David. Mm -hmm. You know, and you never know when that diary or letter or something might surface that talks about the funeral of that person. So I wouldn't give up hope. And I also wouldn't invest in a backhoe and start digging up the cemetery (laughs) looking for DNA samples to confirm if he's the right person there either, which, believe it or not, the Ask Us Anything has not got that question, but I have got that before as a question. <laughs> People, you, somebody wanted to dig up somebody? They wanted to know the legal right they had to exhume a great, 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 great grandfather who died in 1758 with the idea that his DNA could perhaps tell them where they came from in Germany. Shut up. Oh nope. my gosh, you're kidding. I, I said, first off, I wouldn't advise uh, <laughs> digging up the dead. Secondly, I don't think you're going to get a county to warrant your genealogical adventure for disinterring someone who doesn't even have a gravestone. So how do you know you're getting the right person? Yeah. So yeah, I yeah, mean that that would be a problem right there, wouldn't it? I suppose you could probably compare it with a Y chromosome test or something, but. I mean, still, that that's an insane question. I can't believe it. Well, we uh, do appreciate the question, of course, from you, Lorene. I hope that helps a little bit. Obviously, we can't answer the question for you. But if you get together with everybody and start to sort it all out, see what you got, see what you haven't collected yet, I'm sure in time you'll have a much better chance at uh, answering that question. All right. And when we return in three minutes, we'll answer another listener question on Ask Us Anything on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmaster's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multimedia Media Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for the Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie.
All right, back at it with part two of Ask Us Anything on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. It's Fisher here with David Allen Lambert from American Ancestors and the New England Historic Genealogical Society. And David, we got a question from Glenn Foster. He listens in Phoenix, Arizona on KTAR Radio. Glenn writes that he has a Civil War ancestor who was born in 1842 and he lived till 1944, so he's 102 years old when he died. But the family story is that on his 100th birthday, he took his first airplane ride. Glenn says, how can I find out if this story is true? It's also said that he actually came to America from Ireland on a clipper ship. So can you imagine that? So from a clipper ship to an airplane throughout the course of his life for the Civil War vet. Well, that's an interesting tale. Well, that must have been the thrill of his life. That's one yeah. form of transport. That's like you and I going on the space shuttle. Yes. Yeah, that <laughs> is. Yeah, I think that's kind of comparable. <laughs> so I should sign up for SpaceX when I turn 100 <laughs> years old now. I'm making a note of that right now. Sign yep. up for SpaceX. I think that the newspapers, with so much of it being available online, from the free, from Chronicling America, from the Library of Congress, to um, subscription sites like newspapers.com or Genealogy Bank, you might be able to find something. And the other thing, if it's a small enough town, the Historical Society might have a scrapbook or someone may have taken a photo. But the other thing is, it's a relative of so many people. I wonder if our person who poses a question has ever asked other relatives of their taking on the story. Sure. Maybe they know the airport. Maybe the airport's there and they have a picture. Or maybe another relative has a picture squirreled away somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I would think so. And, and we're talking not just first cousins, but maybe second and third cousins. I mean, think of how many generations are from a Civil War veteran down to now. I mean, here's somebody who lived practically 180 years ago. You know, their children are born in the 1860s to 1890s, sometimes 19 aughts. Those people would be well over 100. And those are probably the great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents of some people. So that picture or story or version of that story could be anywhere. This ties into something I wrote about on our Weekly Genie newsletter here recently about the idea of doing descendant research, because descendant research can reveal so much information. That's how I cracked open my name line after eight years where I was stuck, because somebody had a note that his great-grandmother had left to his mother. I mean, there's so much information among the other descendants. And unfortunately, I think now we take that so much for granted because they're so easy to find using the Internet, using Ancestry, using uh, all kinds of sites to track them down. We don't like to reach out and contact, or, or people don't even reach out to respond back to us sometimes. But nonetheless, it's really worth your effort to try to find as many people as you can among your descendants and see if they've got something related to that. That'd be a great picture, wouldn't it? I think that would be a wonderful one, especially (laughs) if he was in his old uniform and waving out of the cockpit window with the pilot. (laughs) Yeah. In in uh, my past life as a morning radio host, uh, I actually helped a 102-year-old fulfill her dream on her birthday to fly in a plane for the first time. And uh, oh. it was just an amazing experience. And she was born exactly 100 years before my youngest daughter. And I got a picture of my, my little girl when she was four sitting in this woman's lap when she was 104. So it's kind of a rare picture, you know? That really is cool. I did a similar thing with my daughter, and the woman asked her, uh, how do you put on your shoes? She goes, well, I tie them. She goes, I had to use use a button hook. And if you missed one, you had to do it all over again. (laughs) (laughs) Great stuff and a great question, Glenn. Thanks so much. And, of course, if you have a question for Ask Us Anything, you can always write us at, get this, askusanything at extremegenes.com. David, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again next week. All right. Talk to you then, my friend. Hey, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the show, got a little out of it, a few laughs, and hopefully a lot of information to help you in your journey as you discover your family story. Thanks to Dr. Henry Louis Gates for his insight on the benefits of family history research. And Tyler Staley and Jen Allen from Family Search talking about all that's going to be going on at Roots Tech in just a few weeks. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again next week. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family family.